Okay guys, in this video segment, we're gonna take a look at the equilibrium expressions and how we can combine the equilibrium expressions with our knowledge of pH to solve for some unknown values then in our uh, unit here. Um, there is a practice sheet on this, so you guys can do some of your own practice also. Uh, that practice does correlate with the practice in the notes, but I'm gonna throw a couple up on the board here that are new and different than the ones that you would see otherwise. So what we're gonna do is we're going to take hypochlorous acid and we're going to dissolve it in water. Dissolve in water. Okay. So when hypochlorous acid dissolves in water, okay. first of all, we need to know what hypochlorous acid is. So it's a hypochlor. So that must mean it's a CLO because it has only a single oxygen on that. And it's an acid, so it's an HClO. So that's hypochlorous acid. When you dissolve it in water, some of it stays together, some of it splits apart into hydrogen ions and hypochlorite ions in solution. So we have an equilibrium. Not all of it is in the ion form, not all of it is together when it's dissolved in water. So we have some sort of equilibrium established here. Okay? So if we write the expression for this, we know it's a Ka value. And it's always our products of our reactants. So we have the hydrogen ions concentration and the hypochlorite ions, or we could also call this the conjugate base. And of course, the original acid we had is our reactant concentration. Now, if I did this, and I dissolved it in water, and let's say I got a pH that was 5.87, let's say. Okay. So if I got a pH of 5.87, can I solve for the concentration of the different things inside of here? Okay, That's the kind of a challenge we need to have. Now, to do that, if I want to know the concentration of everything inside of this equilibrium, I need one more piece of data. I need to know the Ka value. Okay, So we can look that up. So if we go to hypochlorous acid and we look up its Ka value, it's actually 3.5 times 10 to the negative 8. Okay, So this value is 3.5 times... 10 to the negative 8. So very small. So being very small, we would assume this would be very reactant favored. Okay? So we're assuming that we're going to have mainly this stuff in here and not a lot of that stuff in here. Okay? Because it's such a small Ka value. Now the trick is, we know the Ka, how do we figure out the things inside of here? Okay? Well, let's see. I have a pH, and I know if I know pH, I can solve for H plus concentrations. So because I have the pH here, what I can do is put that into my equation to solve for H+. plus. So I know if I take 10 raised to the negative pH, that will give me my H plus concentration. Okay? So 10 raised to the negative 5.87. We punch that into your trusty your dumb calculator. 10 raised to the negative 5.87. And now I got a number. So my H plus concentration is equal to 1.3, let's call it 5, times 10 to the negative 6, which should make sense. It should be a small number here, right? Now, here's the key part. If this concentration equals that, so does my hypochlorite concentration. Because you can't make one of these without making one of these. So for every one of these we make, we have to make one of these. So these things are going to be equal to each other. What then tells me that I now have the, this value, I now have this value, and I have this value. So one thing I'm missing is this. So a little algebra will take care of the last part of this. Okay. So we'll rearrange our equation, and we can say that the HClO concentration should be equal to the concentration of these two things divided by the Ka. Not G, A. Okay, so I know these two. Let's plug these numbers in. So it's 1.35 times 10 to the negative 6. And we have it twice, so that value actually becomes squared in here. And the Ka is 3.5 times 10 to the negative 8.
And now I can solve for the concentration of my weak acid that is not ionized, that is still in solution, okay? So if I do that, let's plug that number in. I got my number still in my calculator, so I'm just gonna square that. And then I'm gonna divide it by 3.5 times 10 to the negative eight. And I get an answer of 5.2 with a bunch of nines. We'll call it 5.2 times 10 to the negative fifth molarity. That is that value there, okay? Again, uh, two sig figs over here, so I went down to two sig figs there. Uh, this had three in it, so uh, assuming that that number is measured, we limit ourselves to two here, okay? So you see by just knowing the pH, well, oh, that's a bad marker. By just knowing the pH and the Ka value of some sort of weak acid, you can actually use the equilibrium expression with the combination of the pH equation to figure out the concentration of everything that's here, including the stuff that does not dissolve, or, sorry, it does dissolve, the stuff that does not ionize when we put it into solution, okay? So that's one example. Now I'm gonna jump into the uh, computer here next and we're actually gonna talk about what happens if we don't have an acid, can we have a base instead, okay? Okay, so if we jump into the next part here, if we have a Ka value, that must mean we have a Kb value also, which we do, okay? So just like Ka's or just like acids can be weak, bases can be weak also. Now the cool thing is this, it doesn't make a difference if it was an acid or a base, it's the same setup, it's the same math, it's the same scenario, we just need to make sure that we have the right expression. So just like for acids, where we took our original acid and put it as a reactant, and then we had our hydrogen ions and our conjugate base. Same thing applies for a base. So in this case, to get a Kb now, or the equilibrium for a base, you put the base as your denom denominator because it's the reactant. And then we have our hydroxide ions that are produced from that reaction. And we have the conjugate acid that comes from that. Okay, So you can also have a Kb value for this just as much as you can a Ka value. Don't make it any harder than it is. It is the same math. It's the same setup as you would for uh, Ka. Now, one little caveat or one little trick to it is realizing that because you're dealing with a base, you may be having to do some work within pOH and pH to make sure that you're dealing with the hydroxide concentrations, not the hydrogen ion concentrations. So we don't ever report pOHs. We always report things as pH. So very possible that your first step in a practice problem like this will be to convert a pH into a pOH or actually so you can solve for this hydroxide ion concentration within this expression, okay? So that really is only the difference between the two things. There is an additional practice problem right here for you guys if you want to uh, work through that. You notice how it says the pH here is this. Well, pH is not going to do us a lot of good. First thing I'll do is take 14 minus this and get this to a pOH, so you can do use it in your um, equilibrium expression, okay? Uh, I'm not going to work this one out because it is part of your practice to work out with the answer key posted uh, there for you guys, okay? So that is the end of this video. Uh, thank you for your time.